Commander Exegius, and today we'll be taking a look at soloing a Thargoid Interceptor, specifically a Cyclops variant, in a Core Dynamics Eagle Mark II. We'll look at outfitting and some of the techniques you'll use in taking down one of these large Thargoid vessels in a small class ship. I'll be using a highly engineered Eagle with the small class Guardian Shard and Gauss Cannons, so this definitely isn't a beginner's guide. Let's start with outfitting. My exact build will be in the link below. Starting with my hard points, I'll be using a single fixed Guardian Shard Cannon with two fixed Guardian Gauss Cannons. I went with this loadout as three Gauss Cannons just generates too much heat and distributor draw, however you'll see I use the Shard Cannon sparingly so it could be left off the build. For my utilities, I'm using a single high capacity heat sink which I'll be synthesizing reloads for during the fight. For my core, I start with a reactive surface composite hull with heavy duty deep plate engineering, but it should be noted that this isn't necessary, as Thargoids do absolute damage, a military grade hull would be slightly preferred for its lower cost. I'm using the Guardian power plant, as this has a higher integrity than an overcharged standard power plant, but that should be viable as well. Charge enhanced and cluster capacitor distributor give a fast recharge with a good deal of capacitor size, and lightweight A rated sensors give me good integrity with low weight. A class 1 fuel tank and 2D frameshift drives are all that's needed as I won't be trying to high wake from the fight. For my optional internals, I forego a shield generator as I simply don't have the power for it, instead opting for heavy duty deep plate hull reinforcements and two guardian module reinforcements. While these do draw power, they have higher integrity than standard module reinforcements, giving me as much of an edge as possible. You'll see in the build that I don't quite have enough power for everything, so during the fight I'll be toggling my life support on and off, however once I lose the first module reinforcement, I'll then have enough power for everything so I only have to do this early on in the fight. Now let's look at the fight. As soon as I drop in, I'll set my life support to priority 5 so it goes offline and all my combat systems come on. I'll make sure I have my pips set to 024 so I'll have maximum power for my weapons yet have some ability to boost away when the time comes. As soon as I close in, I'll pop a heatsink and begin my attack run with the Gauss Cannon and Shard Cannons, exerting and destroying the heart as quickly as possible. Here I'll be Flight Assist on to help steady my Gauss Cannon shots, quickly going FA off as soon as the heart is destroyed so I can boost away quickly. It'll take me two heat sinks to destroy the heart. As I leave, I'll turn my life support back on to ensure I don't run out of oxygen. Now it's time to run. It takes 90 seconds for the Thargoid shields to dissipate, and with my limited weapons and integrity, there's no point in trying to take it down. During this time, I'll boost away with flight assist off, tracking my distance to the bug or swarm. I can also use this time to ensure my system capacitor is refilled, so I'll have that when I need to use my heat sinks. Once the shield is dissipated, I can go in for the next heart, again popping heat sink as soon as I begin the attack, exerting the heart and destroying it as quickly as possible. I'll go flight assist on to steady myself while trying to use my thrusters to be as evasive as possible of the Thargoid and Swarm's attacks. I'm also careful to keep my distance further than 800 meters to assure I'm not snared in the Cyclops' force lightning, which will bring me to a dead stop. Once again, it takes me two heat sinks, and unfortunately I'm hit with a few missiles at the end of the attack, losing one of my two module reinforcements, meaning I no longer need to worry about my power issues. As I run, waiting another 90 seconds, I synthesize a reload for my heat sinks. While I could use a premium heat sink and even Gauss Cannon reloads, giving me a 30% additional damage, I didn't need to do so. Once again, I track the bug and swarm to make sure I'm keeping a good distance, at least 3 kilometers. I wait for the swarm to fire a barrage of missiles at me, turning to evade them before going to the Cyclops for my next attack. As before, just as the attack begins, I set my pips to 024 and pop a heat sink so I can fire my Gauss Cannon as rapidly as possible. This time I get too close and am grabbed by the Force Lightning, fortunately as I fly by, breaking its hold quickly. I'm then able to take out the heart and again boost away, waiting for the coming shutdown field. Before being hit by the field, I'm sure to boost and go flight assist off, so I'll just drift away while I'm shut down for 30 seconds. This works out fine as I need to evade for 90 seconds anyway, waiting for the Cyclops' shields to dissipate once again. This time I set my pips to 240 to ensure my systems capacitor is once again full for my next attack. I fly backwards, monitoring both my attackers to ensure I'm keeping appropriate distance, boosting often. I'm waiting for the next missile attack, which I once again evade before going in for the final heart. 
Again, I pop a heat sink as I begin my run, setting my pips to 024. Just as I take out the final heart, I grab the force lightning again and quickly go FA off and boost like a madman to escape. Fortunately, I take little damage and am able to evade the next round of missile from the swarm. I check my modules to see how badly I've been damaged, fortunately not too badly, and wait for my final attack run, synthing my last heatsink reload during this time. I prepare for my final run, once again waiting for and evading the incoming missile attack from the swarm. I set my pips at 024 and begin my run, taking a few missile hits in the process. I know the Cyclops is near death, so I go aggressive to get my final few shots, and with that, I'm treated to a rather satisfying death sound and explosion from the Great Beast. The battle is victorious. While this certainly isn't easy or beginner level combat, if you haven't yet done battle with these rather fantastic opponents, I hope you'll give it a try. Linked on screen is my general guide to Thargoid Interceptors, for which an engineered ship is very helpful, but certainly not required. If you have questions about ship builds or tactics, drop them in the comments below. I'd also like to thank Commander Gluttony Fang for his assistance in much of my Thargoid combat. You'll find a link to his channel in the description as well. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that look at small ship Thargoid combat, I hope you'll check out my other Thargoid and Guardian content, and join me on my weekly live streams, Tutorial Tuesdays, and the Creators Roundtable each Friday, and that you'll consider supporting my efforts via Patreon.